I might look like I'm in the middle of a muddy building site, but behind me is a key point in one of the most ambitious engineering projects undertaken anywhere in the world over the last few years. The pipe which you can see just going into the ground and then out to sea behind me is the Nord Stream pipe. It's the world's longest underwater gas pipe, it's the world's thickest pipe and it's also one operating under the most pressure. It's a flagship project for Russia. It was mooted for over 10 years before construction could actually begin here and it's going to cost over 7 billion euros at least. Russia is now proving that it is capable of initializing and carrying out such large-scale projects, taking part in all of their phases starting from modeling to constructing and operating. This is no ordinary metal pipe. It's got to be able to withstand extreme conditions. The thickness of the walls is four centimeters. It's able to not break down if there is a cold temperature of more than minus 50. Also, it looks kind of solid, but it's actually extremely flexible. It's able to swing in a range of more than a thousand meters. And in fact, it's at the moment it's being laid down on a ship about a thousand kilometers away near the coast of Germany. The world's most powerful compressor station, which is just one kilometer back there, will be forcing the gas to go at huge pressure. So you don't need any kind of other compressor stations in the middle of the pipe. On its way to realization, the Nord Stream project faced a lot of objections. Now, one type of objection was from environmentalists, those in Sweden and in Finland two of the country through the seabeds of which the project will go through were worried about the impact of the project on the seabed and also what might have happened if there were any kind of seismic emergencies. Well in this respect Gazprom and other contractors have not only gone and done everything to make sure that there are no emergencies, that nothing happens to the pipe, but they've gone a step beyond that. They've said that the seabed of the Baltic has been damaged already by previous wars and previous pollution and they're actually going out of their way to restore some of it to a better condition. The other objection was political. Russia already supplies nearly a third of Europe's gas. But Russia has said this new pipeline was going to bring a new level of security by avoiding the kind of conflicts which happened with transit countries with Ukraine in years past that basically held the whole of Europe hostage to the demands of one transit country. And recent events in the Arab world are playing into the hands of those behind this project. With the instability there, it's obvious that Europe needs Nord Stream more than ever. Okay.